Good morning, everyone. Sorry for uh, getting started a couple minutes late here. We had some tough technical difficulties, but I think we're all set. Um, hopefully, you can see my screen. We are recording this session, so it will be sent out for everyone as well as published on our YouTube channel. We'll go ahead and get started. I see a couple people logging in, so let's give it another minute here. I received a couple emails saying that people were getting kicked off, so uh, let's give it one more minute here. Okay, can everyone hear me? A few housekeeping items. We um, have everyone muted. We can take questions um, via the chat, so feel free to do that or raise your hand um, since you are in listen-only mode, and I can unmute your microphone. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, this week's topic is job cost reports and the tools within Stage 100 Contractor. So um, we had uh, a lot of tag clients that were registrants for this week's topic. So we hope that this is helpful to you guys. And um, a few people that I haven't had the pleasure of working with yet. So hopefully this will could give you a good peek um, into what TAG can provide you in, in relation to uh, accounting software and technology. We also have a guest speaker that will be joining us to talk a little bit about um, cloud hosting for this system and what's available, how that works. Uh, so at the end, stay tuned for that. So we'll jump right in here. Um, we will talk about um, all of the different reports that might be helpful to you guys in relation to job cost. In addition, we'll talk a little bit about a couple of the tools that are equipped um, within the modules of Stage 100 Contractor, things like report automation, uh, the writer, um, cost over budget warnings, and that cost to complete tool. Uh, we will also feature a couple of the top picks by our Stage Certified Consultants, so our uh, recommended uh, reports that we'll have for you to take a look at as well. We'll get started here. So Stage 100 Contractor breaks down job costs through cost codes and cost types. So you have the capability to use a custom cost code structure or one of the pre-built standard industry cost codes um, that are available to you. So giving you this detail and reporting allows you to refine your estimating or your budgeting process and if you're using the estimating module within Sage 100 Contractor, or if you're using Sage Timberline Estimating, you have the capability of exporting that estimate right into your, uh, the project budget. Not only that, um, estimating basic within Sage 100 Contractor gives you a lot of capability to export all of your purchase orders with just a couple of clicks of a button. Um, your subcontracts, it'll allow you do this, to do the same, so it will definitely increase efficiency. Um, if you are utilizing that integrated module. Um, so a couple of the uh, really widely commonly used reports, the job status report and the committed cost report. So 611 job status report is a great snapshot of how your job um, or your jobs, you can run it on multiple jobs, how they're doing. So it shows the original contract, any approved change orders, your new contract, what's been invoiced to date, and your new balance on that contract. You also have your cost to date, change order costs, and your new budget at the bottom. Then you've got your committed cost report. This one shows you 
in detail by cost code how your budget and approved change order costs compare to those costs incurred and what you've committed. This report also includes uncomputed payroll with an estimated labor burden. So it's great if you are um, putting in all of your hours um, immediately. It'll give you a lot of great detail there. Okay, so here's another one that's a great, um, great overview. Job cost totals here. Um, and this particular one is the version that includes the phases as well. So you could see um, job 201 here has um, all of these job cost totals by category and, and also has um, everything broken up by phase. Then you've got this one here, which is the job labor hours and actual versus budget. And then it includes um, uncompleted uncomputed payroll. So again, if you're using one of the tools um, like um, Sage Field Operations, which allows you to bring in that those hours immediately, or um, you know, it, one of the other integrated uh, timekeeping options, this is great. It gives you a lot of detail, and this can also be uh, run on the same schedule. So you can have all of that be sent out to project managers on a regular basis. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the tools that are available within the Sage 100 Contractor. Report automation is something that I encourage all of our users to continually take advantage of. Um, it's a great way of just making sure information gets um, sent out to project managers, um, management, or even for yourself, it just allows you to um, automate that information going out without you having to forget about it or, or think about it. So this can be run on um, a number of different uh, frequency options at any time of day. You can schedule this to print out on your office, maybe before uh, a meeting where everyone's going to need copies to review. You can send this out by fax or email as well with um, a particular body and subject. Now, if you have these all scheduled, you can maintain those schedules here in the scheduled reports manager, which is in the seven five utilities. Okay, the report writer wizard, this is one that um, I think is really handy. Some people get scared of uh, jumping into to changing things and it is a little bit of um, a task to figure it out. So you, we just had um, a webinar on this. If you'd like the recording of this, please let me know. Um, but it covers how to make some quick, ch quick changes and edits to either the report form or, or the report itself. So that's either the header or the body of it. It's, it's easy to make just some small changes that really change the look of it. Um, and if you want to add columns or some take out, um, take out columns, excuse me, because to get what you're looking for. Now the, the system comes with over 1200 different um, reports and forms. So if it doesn't have something exact the way that you want it, it's very likely that you'll be able to just make a few quick changes to be able to get exactly the format that you're looking for. So again, let us know if you'd like a recording of the report writer uh, webinar. We have that on hand. Okay, let's talk about the cost over budget warnings. So Stage 100 contractor tracks all costs against the prime contract, budget, and subcontract. So when an invoice comes in, the software will automatically warn if it's not for something that's in the contract. So it also raises a red flag if costs exceed what's outlined. Um, and these red flags can be either a soft warning or, or they can completely stop you from proceeding. So that's totally up to you. There's a lot of um, setup that you can do to really make sure the system is taking care of things for you the way that you'd like. So um, on top of that, you've got these tolerance types. You can do a percentage or a flat dollar amount. Um, so that's something that's very customizable to allow you to stay on top of things. The cost to complete tool is also another um, portion of the software that many users um, don't take advantage of. So you've got cost to complete, hours to complete, and units to complete. We actually will be hosting a Lunch and Learn um, in person in Irvine um, 
in June, the first week of June, that is more of a workshop to really cover how to utilize this tool. It's very handy, um, handy way of looking at a job in progress and being able to gauge, you know, how you're doing. So again, take advantage as much as you can. If you'd like more information about our workshop, um, it is a complimentary lunch and learn for our clients um, or anyone considering this system. So please let me know if you'd like to attend. Um, everyone is welcome. It, again, a very handy tool to take advantage of in project management here, and not a lot of uh, folks are using it, so please, I'd encourage you. Okay, lastly, we'll talk a little bit about the top favorites of our Stage 100 contractor um, certified consultants. So the first one is the job income statement which is in 614 and it's the version um, 771 here. So it gives you a nice snapshot here. We're looking at job 186 in the sample database here. So kind of gives you a little bit more than uh, the other report that we were looking at. We've got also the job billing summary, gives you a lot more detail in regards to these cost codes and um, Gives you, gives you quite a bit. And again, these reports can be modified. So if it looks like something that you really like, but it's just a little bit off, we can, we can make that happen and uh, make it exactly what you want. Job profitability is the last um, top favorite that our SAGE certified consultant had um, sent over for me to recommend to you. So this one here is looking at all of your jobs and then um, some percentages here for you to take a look at. So at this time, what I'd like to do is um, invite our special guest, um, Tanner, who will be able to talk to you about cloud hosting for this system. Tanner? All right, can you guys hear me okay? I can hear you, yes. Okay. Perfect. So um, let me go ahead and share my screen here with you guys. All right. All right, Leon, you guys able to see my screen okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Well, uh, first off, I want to thank uh, uh, the team at TAG to have me as a guest speaker on today's webinar. Uh, my name is Tanner Evernrude, and I am with an organization called My CRE Cloud. Uh, we are one of the top Sage CRE cloud hosting providers uh, out there in the industry. So for those that are looking to uh, take the Sage 100 contractor application to a cloud-based platform uh, to eliminate the in-house server requirements, workstations, and the cost of uh, managing those services uh, is all included with the, the hosting services uh, that we specialize in and really uh, specialize in the Sage uh, CRE platform. But uh, today we're going to talk about some of the benefits of going cloud hosted um, and we'll go into a little bit more detail as to why a lot of construction and real estate companies are going cloud these days, uh, especially for the new requirements uh, that are coming out next year for the, uh, the NIST GDPR and SOX compliance uh, when it comes to um, government contractors that they have to meet starting in uh, uh, next year. But uh, some of the benefits we'll talk about today uh, when it comes to cloud hosting is obviously one of the biggest benefits and, and why uh, clients go to uh, cloud-based services is the accessibility of your Sage 100 contractor system. Uh, not just the Sage 100 contractor system, but also any other third-party products that may tie to your applications, uh, such as uh, timekeeping softwares, document imaging, project management, uh, anything that relies uh, on communication to the Sage 100 contractor. Uh, those uh, softwares can also be cloud hosted uh, in the same environment. So not just accessing your Sage 100 contractor component, but any mission critical business business applications that your organization relies on uh, can also be hosted within that private cloud server. Uh, and then from there, that server is accessed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. 
Um, <clears throat> with that being said, um, not just the accessibility uh, and the uptime of your Sage uh, 100 contractor, but also how we can access that, that system. Uh, so today for, for most companies, especially with remote locations, uh, VPNs or Citrix or terminal servers are required uh, to, to log into a local version of the application. Uh, but once going cloud hosting, um, there are many ways a user can actually access the application, uh, including Windows machines, tablets, home computers, Mac or Apple devices, t uh, tablets or phones. Uh, so especially for project managers out there in the field that uh, want to get access to the project management application in Sage Runner Contractor uh, or any uh, other um, modules that they all have access to uh, can be done through a also a mobile type device uh, connected with a Wi-Fi or a data connection. Uh, security these days is very important uh, when it comes to your financial data and any other application that you may be housing. Um, and as you well know out there, um, there are many new viruses and ransomwares. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times we hear a week uh, for local servers that have gotten hit with the new malware that's going around right now. Uh, that's encrypting backups, uh, Sage data, and the actual servers themselves. Uh, where um, some other non-cloud host Sage companies I've worked with, I've heard some pretty horrible stories where they were not e even able to recover uh, from, from the actual virus. Uh, so with going cloud hosting uh, and taking advantage of colo-location uh, security and vulnerability, uh, all cloud servers are guaranteed and protected uh, from malware and virus uh, out there that's and there's many out there these days that uh, we'll definitely we, we have a whole topic on security uh, in one of our future webinars through organization but uh, security is uh, is the utmost importance and and why we thrive here at my Siri cloud it is to make sure that your sage 100 data is at all times protected uh, with the leading industry practices and or hardware uh, used to protect your sensitive data uh, support. Um, we offer uh, full support, not just um, uh, on the actual server itself, but other support utilities as well. Um, the actual softwares and or hardwares are always maintained by MySiri cloud personnel. Uh, so that means that for uh, the IT side, uh, all servers are maintained, upgraded, and secured by the MySiri cloud team. Uh, so no IT representative or expensive uh, outsourced IT uh, or what we refer to as an MSP partner, uh, you know, uh, will pay for those services to have that maintained on your server. Uh, those are also included uh, with many cloud providers out there on the market. Uh, including with disaster recovery, uh, which is a big topic uh, these days, especially from recovering from a, a malware or ransomware type uh, uh, virus there. Uh, with most cloud companies, including MySiri Cloud, uh, disaster recovery is included. Uh, so make sure that uh, actual backups are being uh, saved into different colo sites and or power grids uh, out there across the United States. So as a natural disaster may happen or uh, a tack on the actual data center uh, ever happens, uh, using that disaster recovery protocols, um, the, the company will experience minimum downtime uh, as uh, that server and or your Sage 100 data will then be spun up uh, in another colo location uh, to grant access and continue on with the day-to-day -day operations uh, versus having to restore uh, for most on-premise servers. Uh, some companies, the average restore time is a week uh, to come back to the last known good configuration uh, on a, uh, a backup uh, routine there. Uh, so disaster recovery, uh, very important topic. And again, we're uh, covering that in one of uh, future webinars uh, that you can sign up uh, within our uh, website today. Uh, performance. Uh, performance is a key point um, when it comes to ma making sure that the Sage Runner contractor is performing at optimum uh, speed. 
uh, as uh, new hardware becomes available. Uh, we make sure that all the hardware and or applications running on that hardware is make sure that it is a, a fast and reliable um, resource that is available on your actual private server. Uh, and another uh, feature that people lastly will see here is a reduced cost. Um, since uh, on-premise servers do require to be uh, switched out and purchased every four to five years uh, is industry standard there. And at six to $10,000 per server, plus the time it takes to migrate to the new server uh, can be very costly for medium to large organizations. Uh, so the reduced cost uh, when going cloud-based uh, will basically eliminate hardware, um, also MSP cost, uh, additional software and services that you, you pay extra on top uh, of uh, maintaining the on-premise servers. Uh, so for reduced cost um, uh, happens for many organizations out there since uh, our industry leading uh, pricing uh, and, and or accessibility to those applications uh, can, can make sure that the reduced cost factor uh, holds up for, for most organizations. Uh, and scalable, uh, which uh, one thing as uh, most people see with on-prem servers uh, is as data grows or the need uh, and the company grows, uh, either new hardware needs to be applied uh, and can become very costly. Uh, so for most cloud hosting uh, providers out there, uh, scalable uh, is one of the key words here where the server can grow uh, as your company grows in the end. So uh, that way, not a lot of uh, um, backbone or also um, personnel is needed to maintain an, an ongoing um, system there. So uh, the, the scalable, uh, uh, not just on the resources, but also licenses when it comes to cloud servers. Uh, many cloud providers out there, they offer um, what's referred to as seat licenses or named user licenses. Uh, where for MySeri Cloud, we run off a concurrent license model. Uh, so for most of our competitors out there, um, going to a concurrent versus a name type pricing scheme uh, can be uh, very beneficial for a company to lower the cost of cloud hosting providers or also going to public uh, cloud providers where you're probably spending about three times the cost for a public cloud provider like Amazon or, uh, or, uh, or Microsoft Azure is the two top leading uh, public cloud providers out there, uh, but can become very expensive uh, to maintain uh, those public clouds. And it doesn't include any of the services and or features that you get with the, uh, the other leading Sage um, cloud providers out there on the market. Uh, we do have a public uh, versus private cloud comparison document available. Uh, so for any of those customers are interested in seeing a comparison chart versus public, uh, private, or on-premise server cost um, and, and uh, availability, uh, we do have a document available uh, and we can definitely shoot that out to you for anyone interested in the uh, comparison model for a public, uh, private, or on-prem server comparison. Uh, if you have any questions when it comes to cloud hosting, uh, you can contact your, your TAG representative today to, to schedule a demo, uh, answer questions, uh, maintain or uh, request pricing, or see all the specials that we have uh, for our Sage 100 and 300 customers uh, uh, out there in the, uh, in, in the industry. All right, thank you, Leonie, for... Uh, for having me on for today's webinar and uh, we'll see you uh, on the next one. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to get in contact with us. Um, you can email me anytime with questions, requests, um, or suggestions for our next topic. We'll be back here again um, every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Feel free to, to uh, get in touch for those invitations. Thanks so much. Everyone have a great week.